Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at BRGR Kitchen Plus Bar, and I'm talking to the owner of restaurateur, Alan Galen. Alan, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen, and what an exciting space and great concept. How did you come to be the owner of BRGR? Wow, yeah. yeah. Owner of BRGR. <laughs> Well, still feels good to say it, it doesn't does it? Still yes. feel, feel because you opened this year. We opened this yes. year. We've been open around six months. Mm -hmm. Opened in early March. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, really a concept that uh, me and my partner have been thinking about doing for a long, long time. And this is one uh, of those dream come true. It's, it's totally one of those dream oh. come true. Um, being in the restaurant business all my life. Um, since I was old enough to be able to work. But on the corporate side, not as an owner? Um, I, I was I was an owner for a short period of time, yes. but most of my experience has been in the corporate world, yeah. Um, big companies, TGI Fridays, uh, where I got my first corporate start and uh, worked for them for a number of years. Did you have to wear a coat and tie? I did have to wear a coat and tie. <laughs> See? Um, obviously, uh, yeah, I wore a coat and tie part, for a long time. It was part of what you did. It was part yeah. of what we did, yeah. Um, Got a lot of great experience in the corporate world. Fantastic restaurant training and restaurant knowledge and things that you can't get uh, on your own in the restaurant business. So you have great bit the business experience. The business experience. Um, I was very lucky beyond the business experience to be uh, given the opportunity to work in the corporate world and help create some new concepts for a couple of these um, companies that I work for. So. I think that's what kind of got me going to where um, I thought I would want to do my own concept someday. You know? So you, you had experience with creativity and that had been a dream and so you and your partner. Me and my partner who is a uh, friend from junior high school, uh, old, athletic, old athlete guy, we played football, basketball, all that good stuff. And had lots of fun, got in lots of trouble as kids. I uh, grew up in a small town in East Texas. and uh, We can hear the East Texas. Yeah, you yep. can probably hear yep. it. She's a, uh, a fantastic marketing guy. Although he's in the oil business, he's a uh, master from Harvard in marketing. Um, You've got a great combination for what has become a, success, a successful venture here. So you have marketing, the restaurant business, and that passion for owning your own. Yeah, and, we're, and we're, re we're really lucky. We do. We have a good group of surround, you know, surrounding me. We have, you know, my partner who has that marketing background. My wife has a real estate background. Uh, his wife has a uh, journalism background. So it's kind of a combination of a lot of things um, in the business side of it. And then obviously I have the, the corporate background in the restaurant business and uh, we both have financial backgrounds in other places. So let's talk about the concept. You found a niche or you, you created one. What is it? Finding the right place to put your restaurant or put your business, we think is one of the most important pieces of being sure. successful. Um, and how we looked at this particular restaurant and this particular business was really two or three things. You know, we felt like the burger business was the most important thing. Since Americana. 1900, <laughs> yeah. Americana, more, more burgers sold than any other food in America, has been the biggest selling food item forever. We felt like maybe there was a new niche for casual dining. Um, people, you know, the consumer today is so much more worldly than they were. They're so much more knowledgeable with the internet and all the things that are well, more well-traveled. And we think they're looking for a couple things. Value, ambiance, and a cool hip place to go. Chef-driven food at a value price of 12 bucks or less, and that includes a burger and fries and a drink, um, which is the same price that you pay at the other casual dining restaurants so, out there. So, being mindful of the price point, creating the, um, which I have to say, this is a wonderful space. You, you can tell a great deal of work and thought has gone into it, and still creating an American favorite. Exactly. That's exactly it. Right on. Put it, put it all together and you've got BRGR. Put it all together and you got BRGR. And then the other piece was really finding the location for it in the market where, where we felt like people would 
would, would really understand it. And, you know, we looked in all of Kansas City and some other cities as well, and, you know, we, we decided Prairie Village was the place where the demographics made most sense. You're right, Kansas City has, our taste has become more and more sophisticated, as have many other markets. I think the Food Network and the attention we're paying to food, we're also paying attention to fresh right. and local. And Absolutely. we care about the people whose restaurants um, are here and the revenue is going back into the community. And so that's Yeah, that's a fantastic a nice point piece. because Kansas City more so than I think a lot of other urban markets. And, you know, Kansas City is certainly a big enough city to be oh, yes. considered an urban market these days. Really loves that local thing. We do. You know, you got local That's what this show is based yeah. on. We, I think we should talk to your chef. Okay. To see, we're going to be preparing two signature dishes. We are. They are the... One is the BRGR, which okay. is our signature burger. Um, it comes from... Uh, we have a group, a section of our menu that is uh, called historical burgers. Uh, there's five burgers, four burgers in that category. And they're burgers that we recreated from our um, reading and uh, looking for the original burgers that were made out there. And there's a lot of people that say they're the creators of the original I hamburger. I tell you, we've done research on it but, here you know, on you in the kitchen. You hear it on the Food Network, and you hear about the Juicy Lucy, and you hear about all those. But um, So we recreated three or four of those uh, in our own way, in our new 21st century way. And the BRGR is our signature burger. Okay. You're going to share another recipe. We're going to do yes. another one that, yeah. is, that we think is really unique to us because I don't know anybody else that does it. Okay. And, um, it's called an out and in burger. And uh, it's kind of similar to the uh, Juicy Lucy in the fact that it's a stuffed burger. Yes. But we stuff it with uh, fontina cheese, lettuce, pickles, tomato. Inside, that's the all burger. inside the inside burger. Inside the burger. Then we put it on an egg bun and put some special sauce on it. I can't tell you the special we sauce won't, recipe. We don't give so away secrets. You can't do that here. But, um, and um, it, it's just a fantastic flavoring of all those things, but they're inside the burger versus all stacked on the burger. So uh, our chef Lindsay uh, is going to show you a little bit of how she makes those and uh, how she cooks them on the grill. Well, again, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. Uh, we're now going to talk to Chef Lindsay, and then we're going to go into the kitchen and make those burgers. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and again, this week we are in the kitchen at BRGR Kitchen Plus Bar. I've just spoken with the restaurateur, Alan Galen, and now I'm talking to his chef, the restaurant manager, Lindsay Hintz. Lindsay, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. You're welcome, glad to have you here. And we're pleased to be here. The smell is, I mean, it smells <laughs> so good in here that I can't wait to start cooking with you, but I thought before we did that, We'd learn a little bit about you. Where did you go to culinary school? I went to culinary school at a school called Johnson and Wales University in Denver, Colorado. Heard of it. And so it must have been a wonderful program because it's a fairly famous school. It was an incredible experience for How long were you there? I was there for um, almost two years. That's standard and you did. I know a lot of it, you know, on the job training as part of your education. Yes. I was actually constantly working at some type of a job while I was in school and the really cool thing about Johnson & Wales University is uh, every about two and a half weeks you start a new um, a new class so it's very uh, fast paced and you never get bored and you know you're always excited about what's going on because you can go from doing desserts to ice carvings in a week so it's pretty cool. Okay and that apparently that pace and that excitement is part of what is your draw here at BRGR. <laughs> so what um, what do you try to accomplish with your cooking here? Well I try to put out good you know quality product to make sure that the customer is happy when they get their burger and they bite into it it's you know more than they expected it to be so. So you always want that aha uh -huh, or this wonderful response and that is that your inspiration is that what drives you? 
is just it, it that's what the chef t it's the it's the customer's reaction and experience it is it's you know it's and you know being able to be in the kitchen and have having little things constantly change every day uh, and having to cope with it and adjust for it and you know end up having great product go out no matter what is very important no matter what <laughs> so you are the man you are the manager in addition to chef and so you're what is it you're trying to teach your staff? Because you're helping them each day make this wonderful result happen. Yes. But they're obviously learning it. Yes, they do, and they learn every day. And the great thing is, is if I if they do something that's not quite exactly how I want it to be done, I, I will teach them and show them how to do it the right way. Um, I also like to try to teach like a sense of urgency and you know this is a really fast place to work so you've got to be able to work fast and work clean and be able to get out the product in a timely manner. So, You know that was as uh, some of the other chefs that have been on the series have said 30 years ago they were going to school in France for that degree of professionalism and that working clean and now of course it's much more place among our culinary institutes but so that's another lesson you're teaching <laughs> yes I, I really want my uh, kitchen staff to be here and enjoy what they're doing while they're look here look forward that, to coming here yes that's the most important part really honestly you can feel it you can feel that in the dining room it, it, yeah, yeah, the staff is enthusiastic and happy about what they're doing. And that's what's on the plate. So fun about VRGR2 is we've got the open kitchen so the customers can, you know, see the guys in action and it's a pretty cool experience. We've got a window right over there that, you know, little kids, they always peek <laughs> over the window to see what's going on back there. So it's a pretty exciting thing for everybody, I think. Well, Chef, I think we should go into the kitchen and prepare two of your signature hamburgers and why don't you come with us? Let's do it. Hello, I'm Bonnie Grabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at BRGR Kitchen Plus Bar. We just talked with, with the chef and the restaurant tour, and now we're going to make signature hamburgers. Yes. Chef, can we begin with the BRGR? Of course. Okay. And what do we have here? First, we have one of our eight ounce patties, and this is actually our special spec beef that we get straight from Houston. Um, and we are going to add... It's, a, it's your own blend of fat and beef yes. and different parts of the cap. Yes, and we are... The, and it's a secret. Yes, it yeah. is a secret. And you're the only, you were gonna say something. We're the only restaurant that has this beef, so. Okay. Never find it. Big it's, secret, it's nowhere else but certified here. Angus beef. Oh my goodness, so. okay. So we have eight ounces of that. Eight ounces All of right. beef. Now what are we going to do for the famous? We are going to be adding two ounces of caramelized onions. Basically what we do is we uh, grill these onions on the grill with a little bit of salt and pepper and butter to get them all nice and caramelized, get that great sugar flavor to kind of come out of the caramelized onions okay. and stuff. So, and easy enough for us to do at home yes, to caramelize. Of course, anybody can do it at home. All right. So we're gonna add these onions in. So again, butter, salt, pepper. Butter, salt, pepper. Eight ounces of Angus beef, the the made to order for BRG. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but you can use any beef that you get at your of local course. grocery store. But this is what you'll find here. And then what you're going to do is we're just gonna take this patty and take it off the paper. Yes. And we're just going to wrap it up and kind of mush it up in here and if you want to get mush your hands mush is a very <laughs> you know it's a technical culinary term mush. that is used all the time yes mush. of course okay oh this feels good too on top it, of it. you know it's a good stress reliever it's a good <laughs> stress reliever is just to now at this point we put no seasoning but the goal is to get the onions, the caramelized onions, pretty evenly mixed. Yes, very evenly Okay, mixed all right, grill. we don't want to lose one onion because that is labor. <laughs> now, once we've mushed it, then what do we do? After we mush, <laughs> we're going to kind of form it back into a little ball. Yes. And we're going to throw it on our nifty, nifty little uh, burger. Oh, well, this is a burger place, so one might burger expect smash. something like this. Yes. Burger smasher. Smasher. Smasher, another no doubt technical term. Yes, you know, it's all technical <laughs> here at VRGR. Throw another little piece of patty paper on there like that. Smush it down. You want to smush? I do. I That's like another to smush. Stress reliever. Smush and mush. Okay, we've and smushed and mushed. So. Now, if you don't have a 
a smoosher at home, you could just... You can just patty it by hand, yes. Okay. And then there is our... What a cute shape. Oh, we are our burgers. Right now, we're, it's going to wait because we're preparing another signature burger another for the grill. Another signature burger, okay. yes. We will be, be preparing the out and in burger. To do that, we have two four-ounce patties. Of Again, uh, Angus beef. Yes. Specifically ground and created for BRJR. Yes. Okay, now what do we do? We will be adding one piece of fontina cheese. Mm, that is such a wonderful, nutty, oh, it's yummy cheese. Yeah. Okay, and then? About a tablespoon of lettuce. And is that regular head lettuce? It is regular iceberg head lettuce. It would be just rough chop. One slice of tomato. We still have good tomatoes coming, so this yes. is, yes, we do. And this time we do add a little bit of our special salt and pepper blend. Okay, and so we know at least there's kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper and then some other little secret Yes, ingredients. it's actually a blend of 12 different spices. Ah, okay, so you'll create your own at home should you and attempt this. It's a little, you know, it's a little bit of a Lowry seasoned salt as well. Okay, well we added one more piece of the secret. All right, and then what are these hamburger pickles? We just got the Heinz, you know, sliced mm -hmm. dill sure. pickles. We're going to add five of these. And it's we added. Important. We did five five slices of pickle folks. Yes. Okay. And I did add some onions right All before. All right. Chopped. Too. Are these white or yellow? White onions. White onions. It's a little lighter, maybe a little light flavor. Yes. Okay. And then we're just gonna pop this other patty right on top here, and then we get to mush again. More <laughs> mushing. I'm More gonna mushing. help mush. <laughs> mush to seal the edges around. Okay, because the goal is not for any of these wonderful ingredients to slip out while it's on the grill. Correct. Correct. Look at that little pocket of yumminess. All right, now our burgers are ready for the grill. Yes. We could do this outside on the grill. We could do this inside on the grill. A cast iron skillet if need be. Yes. So just before you grill your hamburgers, when you want to season it. And you do want to be, you know, pretty generous with your seasoning. It's very we important. Forget that. We forget We think we should, but some of it comes off in the pan or on the grill. You know I am going to do this. I have my hand in special secret seasoning that I now know has at least three ingredients. Lori's seasoning, salt, salt, pepper, and some others. Thirteen others. Thirteen other spices. And you know, I had a lesson at the American restaurant. It says that when you season, you're supposed to hold the seasoning fairly far above yes. the product because you'll get a more even distribution. Yes, and that's very important. That's one of the things I do stress here at VRGR is that staff. we completely cover, and so every piece of the burger has equal, perfect seasoning. See? We're just learning all along the way here. Straight on. Straight on with us. Now, are we wanting a fairly hot room here? Yes. We are at about uh, 400 degrees right oh, now, so okay. it's hot, high, high heat. That, that really gives a, it seals the juices into the burger so that they're not going to run out. That's another very important thing about burgers is you never want to smush them down Please on the Please listen to this. <laughs> because we tend to play with our food, but how many times will you see people pressing whatever piece of meat they're grilling? Please don't do that because you're squishing out the juices. That's the flavor. So the hamburgers are on the grill, and of course, you know what to put the hamburger in is a part of the experience. It is. What What have you selected, Chef? I have an egg bun here, and that is for our out and in burger. Okay. It's a little bit of a richer bun because it is made with egg yolks, and it's got a little bit of a higher sugar content. Mm, it's it, like you know, a brioche almost. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And then this, of course, is an onion bun. Perfect for the BRGR with the caramelized onions mixed in. Okay, so this for the in, in out, out hand, hand. Mm -hmm. and this for the BRGR. And what are we going to do to the buns before? We are going to butter our bun because oh. butter makes everything better. You know, <laughs> and you don't have to put a ton of butter on. It's just enough to give it that toasty. Yeah. Okay. We lightly butter the griddle. So if you were at home, you just put a little bit of butter. Yeah, and let it melt. Just like buttering your toast. Yeah. And a warm bun is always better for a burger. Isn't that amazing? Basically, the out and in burger, it's best for us to cook it to about a medium, possibly a medium well, because if you try to cook it well done, the cheese will start to kind of. But the perfect out and in, you'll just see a little trickle of cheese start to fall out of the side, and that's when you okay. know it's ready. And you know, we have believed that meat should be rare 
and now we learned from our chef that not to cook it well done so that it's all dried out, but by cooking it, you caramelize, you get more of the flavors, the fat melts throughout, and it's actually a more flavor, flavorful product when you cook it a little bit. Yes. Do we want burgers to rest a little in the same way that we want chicken or meat, or not, not necessary for a burger? It's not as necessary, but it still does help redistribute the confusion. Any time that you're cooking any kind of a type of a protein product, it really does help because if you just cut into it right away, all those pieces are going to come right out and they're going to rush out. It's so burger. hot you almost could put it in your mouth. So by the time it is cool enough to eat, it's probably going to be where it needs to be. spread all over so you get everything in each bite that's and because we have the pickles on the out and in burger already in inside, inside yes. so we've got to finish this up we have two signature hamburgers now and what sides are you recommending with them chef my biggest recommendation is to get the combo because then you get to you experience get a little bit of everything so what we have here are our house-made onion rings, our house-made onion straws, and our sweet potato fries that we toss in a little bit of brown sugar mm. and our special uh, seasoning blend again mm -hmm. so you get that sweet and salty uh, flavor going on. Well, you know, we're gonna go over to the bar. We're gonna pair all of this with drinks. Alan's going to do that for us. And then we have a famous artist who's going to be our celebrity taster. Yeah, Chef, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we have just been in the kitchen with Chef Lindsay preparing their signature BRGR and out and in burger. And now what to drink with those signature hamburgers? To answer that question, we're going to ask owner Alan Galen. Alan, what should we drink? Let's start with your BRGR signature hamburger. Signature hamburger. Well, what I picked out was um, it's called a mi michelada. 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 Okay. And it's it's beer, lemon juice, Worcestershire, and a touch of soy sauce um, with a tad of Tabasco. So did it's you kinda, create this? I did not. You did not. But it's a version of a drink, of really kind of a, a new hip drink. Started on the West Coast okay. um, where people were drinking Coronas and they were throwing limes down in it and lemons and things like that. And this is a version of that that we put on our list a while back. And 
the reason I would pick it is because it's got, it's, you know, burger and beer. Can't go wrong with a burger and beer. This is a spicy version of the beer, so it really brings out the flavors of the burger and uh, matches up pretty well with it, I think. Okay. Well, it looks delicious. Of course, our celebrity taster will have to give us his opinion, but okay, now for the out and in burger, what did you select? Well, I, I went with a sangria. This is our house-made sangria. We make it with uh, Merlot, uh, brandy, and then we top it off with a touch of champagne. Um, you know, red wine is always a nice match with the burger, sure. and the out and in with the stuff, the fontina cheese, um, the red wine's a nice match with that. This is a little bit lighter version, a little fresher, you know, the cold with the ice and everything. So I think it really tops off that burger nice and uh, makes a nice match. Well, Alan, I think those are excellent choices. And our celebrity taster, who is an artist, you know, Be is right he's, I think he's going to appreciate their beauty, let alone their taste. There you go. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we are in the kitchen at BRGR Kitchen Plus Bar. We have prepared two of their signature hamburgers. One is the BRGR, and the other is the Out and In. Then we've also paired them with a sangria and an enchilada. And now to taste them, we have invited an artist. His name is Bill Rose. Bill, thank you for being with us. But now I have to brag on you just a little bit before I let you taste or ask you to taste the food. Bill has um, won a um, competition for the cover of American Artist Magazine. And with that publicity was discovered by a director of a Clint Eastwood movie and spent three months yep. doing the incredible. artwork for that movie. It's going to be released in November. Uh, yeah, this fall, and no specific date yet. Carmel by, the, Carmel by the Sea. Carmel by the Sea. Okay, well, what a wonderful experience. Oh, and you used to be an IT guy? IT project manager. IT project manager, become artist, and our restaurateur was in the corporate world and became a restaurateur. So this is the perfect setting for two people who followed a dream. Oh, yeah. And now totally. your assignment, your task, is to taste this these This is really going to be tough. Yeah, I know. But they I smell really good. Yes. So the one with the onions on it is the BRGR. Okay. And then the one, this one, is the Outman. You can taste whichever one first. Okay. I'm going to taste okay. it with you to make sure. All right. Because I've been busy cooking in the kitchen. I've worked up an appetite here. Gotcha. This I looks know. incredible. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That is good. That's good. Their hamburgers. The huh? meat for their hamburgers is Angus beef from Texas. He's from Texas, well, so you yeah. don't get too far from your roots. Sure. Mm -hmm. And he has that specially ground and selected in Texas. Oh man. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I am consider myself a connoisseur of hamburgers, so this is incredible. It's this incredible, really and you're. I've been wanting to try this, so this is perfect. See, this was. Yeah. And one of this is a brioche bun, which is sort of like an egg bread. Okay. And this is an onion bun, and they select the buns to match up with the flavors of the hamburger. So now you have to yeah, okay. tell me what you think. Okay. I am Twist going to too. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of which one's my favorite. Oh, that's awful good. I don't know too. if I can do that. Yeah, that's awful good too. Wow. <laughs> Maybe it's the no. out and in. I don't know. What do you? I don't know. I I, I I almost like the first one best. Which one was the first one? The out and in? Yeah. Yeah, it was the out and in. That was I like amazing. Them both, actually. The meat is, you yeah, know, as really we good. say. Oh. You don't start out the season good. it and cook it and do whatever it wants. What I like what I like is that they don't completely overpower the hamburger with you know, you can go to these burger places that have the stuff just piled up on there and you can't even find the burger in there or taste the burger. This is really the burger's the star. Yeah. The yeah. burger is the star. Yeah, really okay. Good. Now their con their sides include look at those onion rings, like wow. amazing. Then they have what they call their onion straws. And they also serve with that sweet potato fries. And I do know some of the secrets. I mean, I will tell you one of them. These sweet potato fries have been tossed with a little bit of brown sugar. 
maybe you should taste one to make sure it's okay. I've already been okay, nibbling okay. on I them. love sweet I've potato got... fries, so... Uh... I'm going to taste this one. This is amazing. Very good. And these are sauces for the some kind of sauce. They are. Um the other piece here is that they make their own sauces. And there's this a whole bunch really good. that's really good. Yeah. Really good. They make their own mustard. This is a sauce that they well some of these are secret ingredients, they're not gonna oh. tell us. No. They don't I think no, they don't. No. And we well, have to respect that, but yeah, we can eat I'm it. Try, I'm gonna try one of these. I'm just gonna bite into it. Just, I'm biting into this. Now, yet another another task before you. Um, Alan has recommended two drinks. One is a sangria, and one is a michelada. I'm going to tell you, the michelada has um, beer lemon juice, Worcestershire, soy sauce, and Tabasco. Wow. Would you have thought of those well, together? No, no. No. Okay. But I'm, I'm thinking gonna... about drinking it. Yeah, I know. Well, okay, here. <laughs> now, just in these obviously salt. Oh, Perfect. That day looks like to great. Then, that would go. Oh, my God. Is that, oh my is God. that unexpected and wonderful? Oh, that's terrific. That's terrific. Okay, and then I'm going to show you another. This is a sangria, the Santa Fe sangria, Merlot, brandy, champagne, and orange lemon. The Merlot he selected because, and to your health, because um, it would stand up to the red meat. Oh yeah. So two yeah, that works. different experiences. I, I could do this with burgers. On you a could do basis. no, yeah. and that's yeah. I mean that's one of the purposes of it is to have that total experience of food and drink. Yummy. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. So how exciting to be a relatively new artist in your career. Oh, it's incredibly exciting. Incredibly exciting. It's just, it's almost surreal. Pursue you know, a dream. Getting, getting lots of national attention. It's been and three months in, yeah, in Carmel. Carmel. Yeah, working on this movie, doing so all the artwork. You were doing all the artwork because the movie, without giving anything away, is about a young artist, a prodigy. Prodigy artist who gets involved in international forgery. Stars, unwittingly. Uh, unwittingly. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, Alfred Molina, Laura McCall, Josh Hutcherson, David Panettiere. I did all the artwork that appears in the movie as the work of this art product. So it was just incredible. It was a completely surreal experience. Had to be on the set. I had to be on the set you every day. Had to be you know, on the set. I had to but... twist my arm. I was on the set all the whole through the whole shoot. Became oh pretty good friends with uh, actually Clint Eastwood's son is in the movie and mm -hmm. his wife is in the movie mm -hmm. and uh, met them and, and uh, worked with them. And it was just just the most amazing. That's really a dream. Many yeah. artists spend their whole life wishing for oh, that experience. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But your work is fabulous and you, you can see the work on WilliamRoseArt.com. Right. Go check it out. It's it's amazing. And I, you. I know Thank your you. schedule is very hectic. I appreciate that you took time out to sure. appreciate a different art form. Oh, it was my pleasure. A different art form, but also of a restaurateur who made a decision again like you to pursue a drink. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I think yeah. we should finish eating. I think we should too. <laughs> <laughs>